Hello and welcome to my bold responsive HTML emails using MGML course. My name is Robin Lowe and I'm a certified UX designer and I have spent most of my career in the fields of email marketing and design. Who is this course for? It's ideal for email marketers interested in responsive HTML email digital designers who need to rapidly build responsive HTML emails as well as add MGML as a skill set. What you'll learn, you'll learn the fundamentals of MGML, email design fundamentals which will include responsive email design and dark mode for email email marketing fundamentals which will include a brief overview of privacy laws like GDPR. So why this course? With this course you'll have the tools to build custom and unique responsive HTML emails as well as a foundation in email design and marketing. So what is MJML? MJML stands for Meljet Markup Language. It's created by Meljet and the reason for MJML is to make coding responsive emails easy. MJML is a transpiler that means it takes MJML as the input and converts it to a responsive HTML email. So why use MJML? It's a markup language with good documentation. So if you're used to HTML, it should be easy to follow along and learn. And if you're in the process of creating a custom HTML email, instead of relying on a template provided by a service provider, then this would make the process of creating a custom HTML email much easier. It also has great email client support. So you don't have to try and fix each client or each email client using hacks. It's all included when converted to HTML. It's open source with an active community and you can also contribute to the MGML project. So how do I use MGML? You could use the online editor. To do that, simply visit mjml.io in your web browser and you can try it live in your web browser. You can also use it offline. So if you have it installed, you can use it via the command line or get a plugin for a popular text editor such as Atom or Sublime Text or Visual Studio Code. And then there's also the official MJML app. For this course, we'll be using the MGML app and the online editor, and these are both free. Mailjet by Pathwire. Throughout the course, I'll refer to Mailjet, but you may come across the brand Pathwire. So for a bit of context, Mailgun acquired Mailjet around late 2019. And Pathwire was announced as the parent brand of both Mailgun and Mailjet around early 2021. But not to worry, because Mailjet is not going anywhere. Okay, so time for the first assignment of our course. We will quickly create and send a test email. And we will do so by visiting mjml.io and we'll use the online editor to create a simple responsive HTML email. And then we will send the HTML generated from the online editor to our personal test email address using putsmail.com. Simply visit the website mjml.io.
and then at the top you select try it live and that will open the mgml online editor and this is mgml version 4.7 and the editor is pretty straightforward you have your editor to the left and your preview on the right and you can collapse or expand you can view your responsive as well as desktop preview you can view your HTML so as we can see we already have a template that we can work from but we will build our mgml template our mgml email from scratch so we'll delete we'll select all and delete and then we will start coding our email so just a reminder that you don't need to have an understanding of mgml for this or even any coding experience this is simply just a demonstration of how easy it is to write up a responsive email from scratch in your web browser and send it from your web browser so let's start with writing up our mgml so we'll start with the mgml tag so let's start by open tag mgml close and that will automatically close that for me as well and then next i will add my body open tag mj body close and that automatically closes for me as well so now I have my structure, my MGML, my body, and the end of my MGML document. And then within my body, I will add my section. So that would be open tag MJ section close if I make if I have an error it will show up in the left margin over here and it will give the reason for this error so you have a linting included with the online editor which makes things much easier even if you're starting out or a complete novice right so let's continue MJ section within our section I want to add two columns so I'll add my first column MJ column MJ column close and I'll add a second column MJ column close and that automatically closes and that is the basic structure of a responsive email using mjml so next we'll add content in the first column i want to add text so i'll use the mj text tag so mj text and i'll select it enter close and this will say MJML and we can see the changes to the right and we'll do the same for this column MJ text And then I'll add the text rocks. Exclamation. Right, so I have my two columns. 
So next I'll start styling my email. So I'll move to the top, MJ body. And similar to CSS, it's background color. equals quote number sign or hash and hexadecimal color so red green blue fff gives me white i could try black so let's try black zero 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 that gives me black but I'll stick with my white. Right. Next, I'll style my column. So in the first column, I'll give this a color of a background color of red. So I go background color and I already have a suggestion, so I'll select it, equals number sign red and green, blue, zero, zero, close. And my text, I like to make it white and center aligned and give it a font size of 32 pixels. So in within MJ text, I style my MJ text module. I'll give it a font size equals 32 pixels. color equals number sign white f, f close quote and then lastly a line it's already suggested I'll just select it equals center. So that's my left column styled. Next I want to give my column on the right a blue background color so I'll within MJ column background color equals I'll make this blue so number sign zero zero for red zero zero for green and ff for blue close and to save time i'll simply select the styling of the mj text i used for the left column so select all of that and I'll paste it into my MJ text. And as you can see the preview on the right. Right, and that's our responsive email done. So I can beautify my code if I would like. Simply beautify. And that's about 12 lines of code. And let's view the HTML. And that's over 100 lines of code. And if we view our mobile version, we can see we have a responsive email. Back to desktop. If I view my HTML again, if and I go under in the head section, I can see the 
font is a custom font. It's the Ubuntu font, which I can change. This is just the default for MJML. And in our address bar, we can see our, we can see the URL for our code, for our email. So I can simply visit that URL to come back to this and make edits if needed. Right, so we want to send this email. So what we'll do is switch to view HTML. We'll select all our code and then we'll simply copy. So command or control C for Windows, command C for Mac. And then we'll go to the website putsmail.com. And we'll select create a new test email and all we do is we add our recipients we'll use our personal email address subject line and we'll paste our HTML in the body we'll just focus on HTML for now so paste I will send it to my personal email address and I'll select add and I might send it to my iOS address. Subject line is MGML rocks. And now I'm ready to send. So I'll go down, tick I'm not a robot and send email. If it's your first time sending to using puts mail, you might have to opt in first before receiving the email. So just look out for that email that requires consent. So according to emailclientmarketshare.com, Apple iPhone and Gmail are the top two email clients worldwide. Therefore, I'll be testing my MJMA Rocks email on these two clients. So first off, with the iOS mail client, on my Apple iPhone email client, I can see that my message has arrived in my inbox from putsmail.com and the subject line is MGML rocks. And I open that and I can see that my email is as I designed it. It's responsive and it has the Ubuntu font. So I'm happy with that. Next up, I'll go to my Gmail webmail client and I can see that the email has arrived in my inbox from Putsmail and subject line is MGL Marocks. I'll open it. I can see that I have my two column layout side by side although I don't have the Ubuntu font showing, but that's because the Gmail webmail client does not support web fonts yet. So with just 12 lines of code, we were able to create our responsive email instead of typing it all out in HTML. And that is why MGML makes creating responsive HTML emails so easy. So well done on making it to the end of the first module. Let's recap. Now you should have a basic understanding of what MGML is. If it's a good fit for you or your team in creating responsive emails and how to go about using MJML. And you should have built your responsive HTML email with the MGML online editor and sent it to your personal email address for testing. Great stuff. So let's proceed to the next module in our course. And if you have any questions throughout the course, don't hesitate to ask. So let's continue with the next section of our course, which is email design fundamentals. 
and a quick overview of what we'll be covering. We will go over a brief history of email, how to design a good email, what responsive email design is, the importance of accessibility when creating your emails, sending a multi-part email, including a brief overview of AMP for email, and lastly, dark mode, including a small assignment to adapt an email for dark mode. So before we learn about designing a good email, let's go over a brief history of email. Even though the concept of email has been around as early as the 1960s, Ray Tomlinson is credited with sending the first email in 1971 by incorporating the at symbol. And as email became more popular, intuitive email programs started to appear around the late 1980s. And email protocols SMTP, POP3 and IMAP became standard around 1995. And then in 1996, a free webmail service called Hotmail launched, giving anyone the ability to own an email address or Hotmail email address, as well as being able to view the email in a web browser, which gave rise to HTML email. And in 2004, Gmail was released as a beta. And as there is no HTML email standards, as all email clients render HTML email differently, using a tool such as MGML is helpful. All right, so let's go over some good email design basics or how to design a good email. First off, you want to make sure that you keep a maximum width of around 600 to 800 pixels. This will ensure that you have the broadest device support. Another thing is to not rely too heavily on images as some email clients block images or might block images, as well as some users might do that too. And if you have to use a custom font, always ensure that you have a cross platform fallback font that is a font that will render on any device and if you have to use a call to action it is recommended that you have a call to action as a button typically we would use a video to draw attention but as video isn't supported in most email clients we would use an animated gif instead or GIF, but keep your animated GIF or GIF file size as small as possible. Another thing is to have a mobile friendly and accessible email. And when designing an email, always keep your audience in mind as well as the purpose of your email. And finally, test your email. So test it on as many devices as you can and always test before sending. So what is responsive email design? Responsive email design is related to responsive web design where a web page adapts to the device screen size. And the concept for responsive design has existed as early as 2001. Ethan McCoty is credited with coining the term responsive web design or RWD. And around 2012, responsive web design was one of the top web design trends. Responsive email design differs slightly from responsive web design as responsive email design makes use of fluid tables and fluid images as well as media queries to make the email responsive. 
And because email opens on mobile have overtaken desktop, the need for responsive email design is stronger than ever. And because of the nature of responsive design, by adapting to the device that it's on, this makes it user-friendly. So let's go over accessibility and how to make your emails more accessible. According to the World Health Organization, just over a billion people have some sort of visual impairment. And because of the nature of coding an accessible email, MJML makes coding an accessible HTML email a little bit easier. One thing to consider when making an email accessible is to make link text meaningful. And when using color, ensure there's enough contrast between different colors and use a tool to test color contrast as well. And if you use images, ensure that you have alt text and that the alt text is meaningful. Unless, of course, you do not need to describe an image. So what's a multi-part email? A multi-part email, also known as a multi-part MIME or multi-purpose internet email extensions, bundles a simple plain text version of your email along with the HTML version. And email clients that can't display HTML will display the text version instead. It's recommended that a multi-part email should be part of every email campaign. And luckily, most email service providers or ESPs send multi-part emails automatically. AMP for email. AMP, AMP, or Accelerated Mobile Pages is an open source HTML framework originally created by Google. It's meant to be optimized for the mobile web and to help web pages load faster. And in 2019, Google announced a subset of AMP components for email, which allows for more dynamic and interactive email, for example, dynamic content like forms, lists, image carousels. However, not anyone can send an AMP email. You have to register with Google to send an AMP email. And if you're registered, sending an AMP email requires adding a third multi-part MIME type. So that would be text, HTML, and then AMP. Although not all ESPs support sending AMP emails, but the list of ESPs that support AMP are growing. And at the moment, few email clients support AMP. That would be Gmail, Mail.ru, and Yahoo Mail. Apple Watch. Just a side note that it's possible to bundle an Apple Watch specific email using a third multi-part MIME type, which allows you to target Apple Watch users. So even though it's possible to do this, ESPs do not yet support the Apple Watch MIME type, but it may be supported in future. So let's cover dark mode for email. Dark mode is a dark color scheme useful in low light environments, for example, at night. And newer releases of Windows 10, Mac OS and iOS, as well as Android support this feature. And Outlook and Gmail, that would be the iOS and Android apps support dark mode as well as well as the desktop email clients, Outlook 2019 and Apple Mail support dark mode. And email clients with dark mode enabled can change an email to support dark mode. But note that the dark mode result can differ across 
email clients. Some email clients will invert colors partially while others will invert colors fully, which could be a disaster for your campaign. And Apple Mail for iOS and Mac OS allow the creation of a custom dark mode. So if possible, create a custom dark mode for your email and enable dark mode detection in the head of your HTML email to keep your email accessible. Another thing you can do is adapt images to look good in both light and dark mode. You can do so by using transparent PNGs or cropping an image to look good on its own. Therefore, you should test your email in both dark and light mode to ensure a well-designed email. Okay, so time for the next assignment of this course. We'll adapt our responsive test email created in the first assignment for dark mode using the online editor. Then send the HTML generated from the editor using putsmail.com to our personal test email address. So for this assignment, we will once again use the MGML online editor. So that's mgml.io or slash try it live. And if you still have your link from the first assignment, you can simply visit that link and you will have your assignment and you can continue working on the MGML email that we created. If you don't have the link, you can simply paste the MGML template included with the assignment. So, right, so we're going to test our email in dark mode clients or email clients that support dark mode and have dark mode enabled. And according to email client market share.com, Apple iPhone, Apple Mail, and Gmail are the top three email clients worldwide. So Apple Mail for iOS and Mac OS. We'll be testing that in dark mode as well as Gmail for iOS. I'm going to send my email again, as we did in the first assignment, just to show the result. So you can skip the spot. So I'll simply copy my HTML like I did in the first assignment. The difference being that this time I will send it, I will test it in dark mode clients. So I'll go to putsmail.com, create a new test email, paste my HTML. Send it to my personal email address. And the subject line as before, MJML rocks. and send email. Okay, so the email has arrived in my Apple Mail Mac OS inbox. And as I have dark mode enabled, I can see that the Apple Mail client has partially inverted my colors. So instead of the white text, I now have dark text. It's not fully inverted, it's still red and blue. Right, so let's move on to testing my mobile email clients. So now I will open the email on my iOS device using Apple Mail and similar to the macOS client, the 
text has been inverted and it's still sort of red and bluish. And then next I'll view it in my Gmail AOS app or my Gmail mobile app. And as you can see, it's completely different compared to what I designed initially and looks nothing like the dark mode in the Apple Mail client. Right, so let's switch back to our MGML online editor. And as MGML does not have any dark mode specific tag, I will add a little hack. And the reason for this is that I would like my email to show up in Apple Mail, desktop and iOS in light mode. Although it's recommended to create a custom dark mode and that's coded using media queries and custom CSS. But as that's out of the scope for this assignment, I will just show a simple hack to force light only on Apple Mail clients. So as mentioned, there is no dark mode specific tags yet in MGML. So we're going to have to insert custom HTML and we want to insert it in the head of our email. So let's start off by going to the top of our email and then just below MGML, we'll add MJ head. So open MJ hyphen head, close. And then within MJ head, we're going to insert raw HTML. And to do that, we'll use the MJ raw tag. So MJ raw close. And then we will add our little hack, open bracket, meter name equals quote color dash scheme close quote content equals quote light close quote and close bracket but if you plan to include custom dark mode style simply create a space and say dark and that will tell email client that you have both light and dark mode but we're going to just force light. And then below that, we'll do the, the same. Below that, we'll add another tag, although just a slight difference. So meter name equals supported dash color dash schemes quote content equals quote light quote and close. So that is our hack for dark mode clients and that will force light mode. So I'll copy this HTML and I'll test it in my dark mode clients again. So copy, go to putsmail.com, create a new test email. 
paste my HTML. Add my email address. Give it my subject line. MJML rocks, but I'll just say in dark mode. Two. Send email. And if I open my email on my Apple Mail Mac OS client, even though I've dark mode enabled, I forced the light version of my email. Next, I'll test it on my mobile device. So I've opened my email with a dark mode hack and I have light mode enabled. And if I switch to my Gmail client, I can see that nothing has changed. I still have inversion happening. The hack only targets Apple Mail clients for now. And if you're targeting Gmail mobile users, then you can try and be more creative by maybe using images and tweaking your email to handle the inversion better instead of coding a custom dark mode. But if you're targeting Apple Mail users, then it's recommended to also code the custom dark mode. So we've come to the end of this section. Let's recap. We've covered a brief history of email, the basics of good email design, as well as responsive email design and designing more accessible emails. And you should have a general understanding of multi-part emails, including AMP for email. And we covered dark mode, as well as adapting your MJML email for dark mode. Well done. Okay, so let us continue with the next section of our MJML course. They get started with MJML section. An overview of what we'll go over. We'll learn how to use MJML how to download and use the MJML app and how to create a responsive email using the app. And then we'll send an email using the MJML app. So let's go over ways on how we can use MJML. As covered in the first section, the easiest way to get started is by using the online editor. This allows you to build a responsive email in your web browser. And all you have to do is visit mjml.io and then select Try It Live. There's the MJML app, which comes with MJML included. And you can install this on your Windows, Mac OS or Linux machine. And you have the Visual Studio Code plugin, and this comes with MJML included. But be sure to install the plugin published by MJML, as there is a version which is no longer supported. And there's a plugin for Atom Text Editor, and this requires MJML to be installed separately. If you use Sublime Text Editor, this also has a plugin. And just as with Atom, it requires you to install MJML separately. And if you prefer, there's also the command line interface. But for this course, we will be making use of the MJML app. Okay, time for another small assignment. We will download the MJML app and then we will have it installed for our operating system. So to download the MJML app, we simply visit the website mjmlio.github.io forward slash mjml hyphen app. And on the page, you should have options for Linux, 
macOS and Windows as I'm using macOS that's the Intel paste Mac as I could not confirm support for Apple Silicon Macs yet I have the option to download for Mac so I'll proceed with downloading and then installing the MJML app Okay, so now you should have successfully installed the MJML app, if this will be your MJML editor of choice. So we'll just quickly go over a few basics, such as how to create a project, and how to choose a template, how to edit and preview, as well as how to send a test email and customization. Okay, so let's launch the MJML app. And once you've launched the MJML app, you should have the option to create a new project or open an existing project or to customize the MJML app. So let us begin by creating a new project. We can give our project a name. Let's just call it test. Test M test mjml so I already have a location selected so I'm happy that I'll proceed with choosing a template now you have your single file basic layout and the header and footer template to choose from and these are blank templates and you can also go to the theme gallery and have a look at the themes available so these are different themes based on different styles of email you'd like to send Let's choose the basic theme template found in the gallery. And once you've selected your template, choose Create. And then you're presented with three columns. The directory column, the editor column, and the email preview. And we have our toolbar where we can create a new file. Go back. can beautify the code, open an MJML file, send directly from the MJML app. You can also copy the HTML, the export HTML or save a screenshot of the mobile and desktop result. And if you'd like to customize the app further, you have the settings options, such as settings for MJML, the editor, preview and you can create your own code snippets so that's a basic rundown of the MJML app I guess it's time for the final assignment of our course and the purpose will be to create an email based on a brief so using the MJML app or your preferred MJML tool we will create a responsive email and then ensure the email matches the standards outlined in the brief. So this will just be a demonstration using a hypothetical company as an example of a brief you could receive from a company or a client. So to get started on the final assignment you should have downloaded the brief. So let's go over the deliverables of our brief. So the deliverables are to have an HTML email with the max width of 608 pixels, have the HTML language EN or, or English, and it should be responsive and minimum email client compatibility is mail for iOS and Gmail and some notes is match the design below as close as possible but it does not need to be exact you can be creative but ensure you match the brand styling HTML links can be a hash placeholder the images are placeholders from Unsplash you're free to use any images and the unsplash credits are noted. 
So we have our links to, for our images and we have the brand style guide to the right of our brief. We have the font, one serat, 300 and 500, HTML colors, primary, red, secondary, black, and white. And we have the preview of our design or the design concept. And we have to match this as close as we can. Okay, so let's switch to our editor that we will use for this assignment. I'll be using the MJML app. I'll start a new project and I'll call it NTG Newsletter. I'll choose my template and I'll go with single file basic layout. So let's refer back to our brief. So the way we'll design and build our newsletter is by breaking it down into sections. So we'll start with our company header, then our image header with a call to action. Then we have text and a call to action. A two column call out and our footer. So this will be the sections of our email. So let's start coding using that layout. So let's refer back to our brief. Let's have a look at the deliverables. So we need a max width of 608 pixels. So let's start with that. We'll go to the MJ body section of our email. I'll delete this. And I'll simply add width equal quote 608 pixels, close quote. And MJML will make that the max width. Refer back to the brief. So let's start with the first section. That's our company header. So yeah, I have a section already, although it's two columns, I'll delete the one column. And here I will s take that out, remove that and call it. I'll remove that and say Nomad Travel Tips. Let's switch back to our brief and we will style that later. We'll focus on adding our content first. Let's move on to the next section. And this will be a single column. So let's switch back to MJML. I'll be adding a new section after this company header section. So I will open my bracket MJ hyphen section and I'll just select that close and I have my section to add my background image to this section I simply say background I'll use the drop down and select URL equals If I know the URL, I could type it in, but I'll simply copy it. So I'll switch back to the preview, to the brief, and I will select from the brief 
as I'm able to copy from the brief, I'll simply copy the link to save time, switch back and command V on Mac, control V on Windows, paste, close quote. And if I look to the right of my screen, I can see the preview. So next I'll add the column for my call to action. and my text. So MJ column Enter and then I'll add my text. Switch back to the brief. I want to add Experience Tokyo's Nightlife. So I will use MJ text for that. Open bracket MJ text. Close. Switch back to the brief. I can select the text from the brief to save me time. And I'll simply paste. So I'll add the color white. So color. I'll select that equals open FFF open hash FFF close and I'll give it a font size of 48 it looks about like the font size should be 48 so font size equals open quote 48 pixels close looks about right refer back to the brief I'll have to add a call to action for my call to action I'll simply use the MJ button tag so MJ button MJ I'll select that, close, switch back to the brief. To save time I'll simply select the text and copy it from the brief. Command C, Command V. I'll view the brief again. I think I'll start tweaking this button. So switch back to, M to my MJML editor again. Within MJ button, I will add border radius for those rounded corners. So border radius equals open quote 8 pixels looks about right and I'll use the background color from the brief background color I'll simply select it from the drop down and then I'll give it hash 21 21 21 close refer back to the brief and that's the color 21 21 21 Switch back to my editor. So the section's done. I'll move on to the next section. So let's just switch back to the brief. The next section will be my text and call to action. 
So back to the editor. Let's add our new section, MJ section. And then within this section, I'll add a column, MJ column. And then within my column, so I'll add my text. So I'll use the MJ text tag. So MJ text, enter to select that. I'll give my text a big font size. If I refer back to my brief, that looks about like a 22 pixel font. The size should be around 22 pixels. I'll use the styling font size. And hyphen size equals quote 22 pixels close quote close that refer back to the brief and to save time I'll simply copy my text and paste so that's the heading of my section. I'll add the body copy. So I'll use an MJ text again, MJ text. I press enter, that will fill it for me and close. And once again, to save time, I'll refer back to my brief and simply copy and paste. and paste. I need to add some spacing. You can see I need to add a paragraph spacing just after lucky one lucky patron. So to do that just use the simple break tag. So open br close and I'll remove that from there so I have enough spacing. If I look at my preview, it's coming along nicely. I have my three sections done so far. Go back to the brief. So next I have to add my call to action. And then just as before, I'll use the MJ button tag for my call to action. MJ button. Enter. I'll give it a border radius of X. Enter equals quote eight pixels close quote. Give it the background color. I already have a drop down hinting and I'll select that equals brand color red so hash d5 zero 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 close be sure that's correct that's right back down to my brief preview and then as with every call for action you need a URL I'll add href equals and as a brief request, simply add a hash, close quote, and close. I need to do the same for the previous call to action. I, I did not add the href for that one, so just href, enter, equals, hash, close. My call to action needs text. 
become a patron today, save time. I'll simply copy that and I'll paste it there. So that section is complete. Let's refer back to the brief. So here I will be adding a callout and my callout will have two columns. So that will be a new section with two columns. Let me re switch back to my editor. Add a new section after this section, MJ section. And I'll have to give it a background color. If I refer back to the brief, I can see it's a slightly gray. So I'll go and match it as close as I can. So I'll use Stein background color. Equals quote hash. I'll go with F6, 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 close quote, that gray looks close enough. And I can see it has rounded corners, so I'll give it a border radius of 8 for the section space border radius. equals quote eight pixels and I'll close this so now that I have my MJ section I'll go ahead and add the two cons within this section so So the first column, MJ column. Close that. And within my column, I'll add an image. So that will be MJ image. Select that. If I refer back to my brief, you can see that my image has a border radius, it's rounded edges, and looks like it's around 200 pixels wide. So back to my editor. I'll start with border radius for my styling. Border radius. Select equals 8 pixels. And then give it width, width equals 200 pixels. And as we covered in accessibility, always include an alt tag for images. So alt equals and be descriptive as possible, but I'll call it Tokyo Skyline. And if you look in the preview, I don't have my image URL yet, but my alt tag is already showing. Next, I'll add my image, image URL or source. So that will be src equals open quote. And to save time, I'll simply copy it from my brief. Copy and paste, close quote, and close. So that's my first column done. Next column, I refer back to my brief, will be my text column. 
that section here. Switch back to my editor. So to add the column, the MJ column tag, MJ column. Enter, close. And I'll be adding text, so I'll use my MJ text tag for that. And if I refer to the brief, it looks like it's around 20 pixels. So MJ text, font size, give it a font size of 20 pixels. Font size equals quote 20 pixels, close quote, close that bracket. And to save time, I'll simply copy and paste. And I can see in the preview, mobile feed preview, and my two columns are stacking. If I switch to desktop, they are side by side. So switch back to mobile. I'll add the rest of my text. So to add the rest of my text, I'll add another MJ text tag, MJ text. Enter. This will be my body text. So close. And then switch back. Copy from my brief. And then I'll paste. Refer back to the brief. I can see that I have a link. It's a text link. Let's do that. Add another MJ text tag, MJ text. Enter close. And then to add my link, open bracket, open bracket A. href. equals and quote the URL will be a hash close quote and I'll have to give my link a color so it doesn't inherit any colors from the email client to do that I'll use style similar to CSS that would be style equals open quote and color for text color colon hash and I'll be using the 21 21 21 semicolon close quote and close bracket that's my link now I simply Refer back to the brief and I'll take my text from here. Read out Tokyo travel guide. Paste. And that's the call out section. We will move on to the final section of our email and that would be the footer. So We'll add our footer section. So let's start with MJ section. We'll add a column within the section. So MJ column. close bracket and within the column we'll start 
adding our footer content. Let's refer back to our brief. And let's start with the address. We'll start with MJ text. Font size looks like around 10 pixels, so font size. I'll refer back to the brief. The line height seems to be more than 10, around, looks like around 14 pixels. So let's add a line height already. Line height, I'll select that, equals 14 pixels. Close bracket. And now we simply add our address. I'll copy this. Copy. Back to my editor, paste, refer back to my brief. I need a break after Nomad Travel Tips. So I'll simply come back, add a break. I'll remove the second close break as I don't need that. And if I look at my preview, that looks about right. Okay, so back to my brief. And then I have my usual unsubscribe. So I won't be adding another MJ text. I'll simply add another break after the address. Two breaks. BR that one out and then I'll paste the rest of my footer text. So I'll copy my footer text, copy, switch back to my editor, and I'll paste it right after the break. That looks about right. I just need to add the, un make the unsubscribe a link. So just before unsubscribe, I will go open bracket a href for my link equals and my placeholder which is hash but it's recommended to always use a valid unsubscribe link before sending I will style it so I did before style equals open color colon hash 21 21 21 semicolon close quote close bracket and as my unsubscribe is outside there I'll simply copy it over Let's switch back. So let's switch to the desktop preview in the editor. Now if we compare it to our brief, I can see that we need to change our font, also the font color. Right, so let's switch back to the editor. So we're going to add the custom font. And to do that, we're going to go to the head of us the head section of our MJML template. And here we can see under MJ attributes, I have the text set as a line, which is correct, but the color is 555. I'm going to update that and I will make it 21, 21, 21. And that updates all the, so all my text that has not been styled should default to that. But I want to change the font family. And to do that, I'm gonna to have to go to Google Fonts and get the font 
Montserrat. So we're looking for the font Montserrat 300 and 500. So to get the font Montserrat, the font sh is available by visiting Google Fonts. So you simply go to fonts.google.com and on the page I already have Montserrat. I can also use the search to find the font that I'm looking for. But as I have it here, I will simply select that. So Montserrat. And if I refer back to the brief, we have, we need 300 and 500. Light 300, select the style, and medium 500. And at the top of Google Fonts, I can see which families I have selected. So these are my selected families. Montserrat, light 300, medium 500. And to use this, I simply need to copy this snippet of code. I simply need to copy that URL. I can copy it under link or under import. I can either take the U full URL, but I'm just going to grab this bit up until 500. I'll copy that, switch back to my editor. So in the head section, I will add MJ font and this will allow me to set a custom font for my email so let's use the MJ font tag MJ font MJ hyphen font and then I give it a name name equals quote mont serrat close quote and then the URL href equals quote and then I paste that link that I copied close quote and then I close that tag and that's the MJ font tag but nothing has changed yet since we need to make a few more edits to our template for the changes to reflect. Next we'll go to MJ attributes. And just a tip, if you feel your code is getting a bit untidy, you can simply use beautify and, and that should beautify your code for you. Right, so under MJ attributes, we're going to add the MJ all tag and this will target all fonts and we'll give it the font family Montserrat so we'll use MJ all so MJ all and then font family equals Montserrat and we'll add our fallback font Arial and our sensor fallback If an email client is unable to show the custom font, it will fall back to Arial and or Sans Serif and then close. And we can see that our font has updated to Montserrat. Let's look at our brief. That looks about right. We're just going to have to set the font, the correct or correct font weights. So we'll go back to our MJ attributes. MJ text tag 
and we're going to set the default to not only color but also the font weight which will be light 300 that will be the default font as well as the default font size of 14 pixels and line height of 20 pixels and that should match our brief closely let's go back to our mj text tag under mj attributes let's add font weight enter equals open quote 300 and as we can see in the preview our text has updated and I want to give my font size in line height. I'll add it here font size equals 14 pixels close quote and then a line height enter equals open quote 20 pixels close quote so if we refer back to our brief i can see that we need to fix our company header the logo nomad travel trips and the hero or image header so let's go to the nomad travel trips section and here we'll give it a font weight of 500 so mj text i'll delete the spacing that i have here mj text font weight font weight equals 500 and close quote so now my company header has the bold font if I can test the light weight font I can see the difference next I can see my image header I need to add a line height there so I'll switch back to my editor and where I see experience Tokyo's nightlife I have my color white it's correct font size for the 8 pixels but let's add a line height after font size line height equals quote 48 pixels 48 pixels quote switch back to my brief Starting to come along nicely now. Okay, so we've set our custom font, we've set our line height and our font size to refer back to the brief. Any other deliverables we might need. So we need to we have our max width of 608 pixels. We need to set an HTML language of EN, so let's do that. Let's go to the top of our mjml template and we will put right at the start of mjml to set the language of our email to html lang equals quote en it will set english as language for our email which is helps with accessibility switch back to our brief we have responsive yes and we still have to test our email compatibility i think we've matched our brief well let's see what else we can do to improve our email another way we can improve is by adding a title and preview text to our email that will be the snippet of text you view in your inbox before opening an email so let's go just under head we will add mj preview mj preview 
close and we will make this experience Tokyo's nightlife and I'll simply copy it from here but you can be as creative as you like for to catch the attention of the subscriber I will use the tag MJ title this will add the title to our email MJ title close I will use you could win a trip to Tokyo as the title so I'll simply copy it from there and that's our MJ preview and MJ title added and as we can see to the left of our email we don't have any errors for example adding that I'll have my error show up and it will explain to me what I did wrong and simply close that bracket I can see I have an error-free MJML template another thing we could do is test out dark mode or add custom CSS for Apple Mail custom dark mode CSS but that's not part of the brief so we will stick to the brief for now right so let's just give it one last review let's have a look at our preview in our MJML app we have our responsive mode and we have our desktop you could win a trip to Tokyo I can add some line out there as well but for now I will send this off for a test all right so let's continue with our final assignment so to send a test email using the MGL map is pretty easy if you have a MailJet account you can send directly from the app if you don't want to use a MailJet account you can simply copy the HTML and as we mentioned before in good email design always test before setting so we will conduct a real world test using our email client right so to do our real world testing next and to send directly from the MJML app you simply select send and to send directly from the MJML app you'll need a MailJet account and you can simply get your details from MailJet enter them here and then you can send directly and to get those details on MailJet.com if you need further support with Meljet, simply contact Meljet support. So I've added my Meljet details and now I'm ready to send my test. So I simply add my personal test email addresses. So I've entered my personal test address and I'll click send and I have my notification mail has been sent and I'll just go head over to my mailbox to check my mailbox what if I don't want to send directly from the MGM app I can simply export to HTML file copy HTML and use that and use a sender of my choice but I will use I will copy and I'll use putsmail.com so I'll select copy HTML and on the putsmail.com website I will say create a new test email paste my HTML and as we covered in multi-part mails I can also include a Apple watch and plain text version along with my HTML and I'm only testing HTML so I'll be sending an HTML only email and if I go to my Gmail webmail client I can see that the email has arrived in my inbox sent directly from the app and I can see the snippet of text that's the 
preview text that I gave my email and if I open it I don't have any images displaying but I have my alt tag for my image I will enable images And obviously the limitation of Gmail is that I can't view the Montserrat font, but it has fallen back to my fallback fonts. And I can always make changes if I need it, but I'm happy with this result. Next, I'll test my Apple Mail client. All right, so now I'll test my Apple Mail client on iOS. I can see my preview text, my preview snippet text. I'll open my email and that shows up and I can see that I have the Montserrat font and my email is responsive. If I compare it to my brief, I can say it looks as good as it was designed and I can call this test a success. So we've come to the end of this section Let's recap. So now you should know how to go about using MGML. Have a good understanding of the MGML app and build a responsive email using MGML as well as send a test email. Welcome to the email marketing basic section of the course. Here we'll be going over a brief history of email marketing, can spam, privacy law such as GDPR and CCPA, and lastly testing and analytics. So let's go over a brief history of email marketing. Gary Thierke sent the first mass email in 1978. The purpose of the email was to sell DEC machines, which was computer hardware. And this campaign proved to be very successful. But because of this, Gary Thierke is also known as the father of spam. With the rise of spam, regulation was needed. And in 2003, CAN spam was introduced in the United States. And in 2004, Sender Policy Framework or SPF was introduced, allowing for email validation. And in 2018, in the European Union or EU, GDPR came into effect, making consent for people based in the EU stricter. Despite regulation, email marketing is still very effective. So let's cover can spam. Can spam was a law enacted in 2004 in the United States to reduce spam or unsolicited emails. If you happen to be in violation, you can be fined. Some of the rules are not to use a deceptive header, subject line, from and reply to. Another rule is to always provide an unsubscribe link that is valid for at least 30 days. And always be sure to include a physical mailing address. This was just a brief overview of can spam. So consult with a professional to ensure you are compliant. So let's cover privacy laws. We'll start with GDPR. The European Union has made it law since May 2018 and you can be fined if in violation. Some of the rules are that you require consent to opt in. And if a subscriber has consented to this email campaign, it should be kept separate from any other opt-in. 
and you should also make it easy to opt out that would be a clear unsubscribe or opt out you should have evidence of consent on record that would be a who when how and any existing email campaigns that are sent to people based in the EU or subscribers in the EU needs to be made compliant. This was just a brief overview of GDPR. So if you're unsure if you are compliant, you should consult a professional. Let's go over the California Consumer Protection Act or CCPA. The CCPA came into effect on January 1st, 2020. It's similar to GDPR, but not the same. So it should not be confused with GDPR. And CCPA, these are laws that strengthen data collection and privacy rights for Californians in the US. And it gives Californians the right to bring a civil action against companies that violate these laws. So it's a good idea to consult with a professional to ensure you are compliant. So let's go over testing and analytics for email marketing. Now there are many testing tools you can use to test your email, such as Litmus or Email on Acid. But real world testing is also important. So you should not only rely on tools, but testing on real devices with real people. Most email service providers have good analytics, such as open, sends and bounces, but they're not able to track further than mailbox. If you'd like to track further than mailbox, you should consider Google Analytics or UTM tags. UTM stands for Urchin Tracking Module or Urchin Tracking Monitor, depending on who you ask. And with this, you are able to track the subscriber beyond the inbox. So if a call to action is clicked, using a UTM tag, you're able to see and gather analytics beyond the inbox. So that's a brief overview of testing and analytics. Well done on completing the build responsive HTML emails using MJML course. To recap, we had a brief intro to MJML and built a simple email using the MJML online editor. We covered email design fundamentals and how to design a good email. We learnt a bit more about MJML and the MJML app, giving us a good foundation to start building emails using MJML, as well as built a responsive email based on a brief and sending that email. And lastly, we covered email marketing basics. So if you enjoyed learning MGML and would like to be part of the community, you can join the official Slack channel. Thanks for taking my course and thanks for watching.